Hello everyone, today's video is about biofilms and whether one can just use the agent DMSA as a biofilm disruptor without any other supports. Uh, just before jumping into the video, if you don't mind taking a quick moment to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it, so thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only, and if you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So the question was posted on one of my other uh, many videos now about uh, biofilms seems to be a popular topic that you all have questions about and the question I don't have my computer right in front of me here but it says something to the effect of um, is is it okay or is it will it work to just take DMSA by itself as a biofilm disruptor as opposed to combining it with um, alpha lipoic acid and bismuth um, so in other videos I mentioned how the strongest biofilm disrupting com uh, combination formula that I'm aware of is this combination of those three ingredients the alpha lipoic acid and the bismuth are combined into a diphthyl structure and that combined with DMSA or DMPS which is another chelating agent um, seem to pack the the best punch or the most punch to get rid of biofilms so um, it's a good question but like could one just take DMSA on its own um, I mean it can can be a bit challenging for some folks in some places to get their hands on that diphthyl complex so uh, where DMSA is you know fairly available um, in, in many places um, to my knowledge so uh, it's a good question and I think that it it is a viable option um, I mean over the years um, for, I, I was prescribing DMSA for heavy metal removal for many years before I learned about uh, phase two biofilm disruptors. Um, that information just wasn't available um, back in the days when I first started practicing. And when I learned about DMSA being a strong phase two biofilm disruptor, um, it just really shone a lot of light on some of the things that I had observed in clinical practice previously, where some patients just could not seem to tolerate the DMSA to save their life. It was just, you know, really, really tough for them to tolerate it. Um, and yet they could tolerate, say, their intravenous chelators, no problem. Um, intravenous chelators like EDTA and DMPS are phase two biofilm disruptors as well. But when we're putting those uh, chelators into the bloodstream directly, they're bypassing the gut. They're not gonna break down any gut biofilms, for example. And I had you know just several patients, not many, but several over the course of time where they just could not tolerate that oral DMSA. And I thought, you know, it's kind of weird because it's, you know, DMSA is a, a good chelator, but it's, pound for pound on paper, it's not as strong as the intravenous chelator. So why was it so challenging for some folks to tolerate it? And I think in hindsight, it's probably because we were inadvertently breaking down biofilms in the patient's gastrointestinal tract. Um, and so um, anyways, just a little clinical tidbit there that was, was interesting to me. So um, the, the reason I bring that up is because um, I, I feel clinically the fact that some patients really, you know, had what I feel were notable biofilm disruption symptoms from just DMSA alone um, does indicate that DMSA could be a viable um, phase two biofilm disruptor just by itself. It doesn't necessarily need that diphthyl complex to accompany it. Um, with that being said, in clinical practice, I uh, don't prescribe DMSA on its own for biofilm disruption. Um, I virtually always prescribe the combination formula. Um, so I don't have a, I don't really have a lot of clinical experience using DMSA by itself for biofilm disruption. It's been more just what I've observed by proxy kind of, you know, just over the course of time, as just mentioned. Um, with that being said, I um, still do recommend DMSA for chelation therapy for many patients. You know, when we're testing for heavy metals, uh, in my opinion and in my experience, um, using intravenous chelation is really the most accurate, kind of dependable way to determine what a patient's heavy metal burden is like um, intracellularly or, or pericellularly. Um, however, um, when we've got the test results back and we see elevated lead, mercury, cadmium, whatever it is, then um, a number of patients wind up working with oral DMSA because it's quite frankly more convenient and less expensive than coming in for IVs. Um, and usually we'll get the vast, major vast majority of patients to the same finish line point. Um, it, the IVs do seem to work faster, but the oral DMSA is a viable option. And so I do have a number of patients who work with um, oral DMSA, and I don't see it being a problem for a majority of patients. In fact, most of them tolerate it quite well, um, but there are some where we do see issues, and I, I think that it's related to the biofilm disruption. Now, what I will say um, on, on that note is um, the number of patients that I've um, prescribed oral DMSA to who also have, you know, other complex chronic illness issues like, um, you know, say, uh, systemic uh, or persistent borreliosis or co-infections or whatnot, where I'd be kind of worried about those um, uh, systemic biofilms or patients with chronic digestive issues, um, I, I do 
uh, find that the folks who do take oral DMSA, they tend to tolerate it a lot more often than they would uh, tolerate the more official biofilm disrupting capsules, the DMSA, bismuth, ALA complex. And so what I think that means, as best I can tell clinically, because there's goodness knows there's no um, human clinical trials um, or, or animal clinical trials, to my knowledge, you know, comparing DMSA by itself for biofilm disruption versus the, uh, the trifecta DMSA, ALA, um, bismuth um, combination, to compare those head to head. So it's really where, um, when it comes to clinical evidence, you know, the, the best evidence, and this is a bit debatable, but, you know, generally the best evidence is randomized uh, placebo controlled trials. Um, but um, then, you know, below that would be things like observational studies and, you know, there's kind of like a hierarchy of a sort of uh, strength of evidence kind of thing. And, you know, one of the lowest, if not the lowest form of evidence in the uh, evidence hierarchy is clinical observation. And, and that's fair. You know, there's, um, you know, human errors going to get in there more frequently. There's going to be more bias and things like that. You know, we I think we all the majority of us strive to be as um, unbiased as possible, but you know, it's human nature. There's going to be a little bit of bias here and there. Um, but for my observations, I think that um, the combination formula of the DMSA alpha lipoic acid and bismuth is pound for pound stronger than DMSA for breaking down biofilms based on what I've seen. Um, but if we suddenly, if I suddenly found myself in a world that didn't have bismuth ALA diethyl complexes, um, I would very happily just use DMSA by itself. I'd assume it would probably take a bit longer to see results, but um, I think it would be a really viable option to break down those phase two biofilms. It's a really, really good um, compound. So big fan of DMSA. So thank you for the question. Uh, I hope this gave you some useful information. If anybody has any questions on this topic or anything else, just post in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer as soon as I can.